welcome to episode 12 of Old Brother, the final episode of series 1. You can find us at Spotify, Apple and all the usual suspects, but we're hosted at play.acast.com forward slash s forward slash Old Brother. All previous episodes are also available on YouTube. You can search for Old Brother Podcast and subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. In the interest of symmetry, this episode, like episode one, only features me and Steve. But this time round, we'll be attempting to answer listeners' questions. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, uh, this is a bonus feature, as prompted by Steve asking people if they had any questions for us. Not the cleverest of ideas, in my opinion, but never mind, we'll give it a go. <laughs> right, right. This one's for you, and it's from Danny No, whose name crops up on this list more than once. I don't know if you're familiar with his work, Steve. I think you probably are. I'm aware of him, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, he, he sent me a question the other day. You know that brown jumper you had on? Yeah, he has put a lot of work in. You're not kidding. Jeez, that's he's incredible. He's put a lot of work into... Uh, the minutiae of what goes on. Yeah, and just keeping, oh, things, keeping things going. Brilliant. I mean, some of the detective work he's done digging out, like that thing with... Uh, what's it? What's the, there's a song about the... Is it Pete Tong? And, and he found the magazine, the railway... Uh, Virgin yeah. Railways magazine. Incredible. Anyway... Right, here we go. First question from Danny No. I don't think there's anything he doesn't know that I could <laughs> Well, at least, yeah, I think he probably could answer this one better than he could. Okay. Uh, seeing as he probably wasn't born. Uh, right. Okay. Where did Staff 9 get their name from? What does it mean? Theories include crossword clues or that it's something to do with musical notation. I think we can blow that one out of the water straight well, away, can't we? Big musical them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, as we found with this thing, uh, people's 40-year-old memories are very different, aren't they? Right. So, But my memory of this is that we were, we'd put the band together and it was... It was suggested that we may get some gig support in the fall because we were right roadieing and helping out. Yeah, and the, as people know, I suppose when you when you think of band names, there's a lot that are bandied about, and there's loads of suggestions. Most of them are dismissed. Yeah, but then Craig had this name, which was. Stall Nine. Okay, which I think he'd got from some literature. Yeah, it sounds like I don't know. Is it? Yeah, and then from what I can remember, Kay phoned me and said, "We need a name for the poster." Right. And I panicked a bit and said, "Craig's come up with a new name. I think it's Staff Nine." <laughs> <laughs> Which, luckily, very luckily, he liked as well. Just as well, isn't it? It just is. Just, I'd, I'd still be hearing about it now. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's clear. So that that's one my up. memories of it. But... Okay. <laughs> right. Here we are. Next question. Some Jonathan. To answer that, there is no real meaning. It means absolutely. Well, all the best. I reckon that all the best band names don't actually mean anything. They sound like they should mean something, but they don't necessarily do. Because if they, they, you get stuck with it, don't you? And if you if you get too closely tied into something proper, you want them. Yeah. You want them to sound yeah. literally I, I, meaning now. The, the other day, I was reading an article about Spandau Ballet. Yeah, that was something scrawled on a wall in Berlin. Yeah. And we're, well, it's the is it anywhere thingy Rudolf S was, isn't it Spandau? Yeah, you have forgotten Rudolf Fess. I know that, but I don't think there's any ballets going on, was there? He <laughs> <laughs> so was the only bloody. He was the only bloody prisoner. It wouldn't have been much of a ballet, would it? <laughs> right. Okay. Right, Jonathan M. Were you both surprised at the time that the sessions for the Marquee Cha Cha single became extended with the Room to Live LP as a result? I really like that album, though I know it received short shrift at the time. So I, I, I'm not so sure that it was a single, was it? I don't think we went in there with the inten- intention of just doing a single because that was booked for quite a while, that studio. It was. It was a week, wasn't it, at least? At least, yeah. When there's no way we'd have booked a studio for a week to do a single. No. No. What, what would the single have been? Oh, it's about Marquis Chacha. And anyway, that, I, I don't believe that. that. There's no way that we would go we in that studio with the intention of Marquis Chacha being a single, because none of us had ever even heard of it, had we? Didn't even know what it was, really. No. 
It was one, one, it, what was it, a rough idea between Mark and Carl? I think it was Carl, yeah. He wrote the yeah. music, didn't he? So, yeah, I mean, that I don't, that's not what happened. We didn't go in to record Mark each other's single because, you know, famously, um, Mark and Craig aren't on it, are they? No, and we did have a lot of songs. Yeah. Well, we did a few ones, didn't we? With, you know, with all six of us on, <laughs> which wasn't how it turned out, but we had like Backdrop and what have you. Silver in Studio. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the other one? Joke. Joker Joke. and Tickle Face, yeah. Well, yeah, we, we had quite a few songs. I mean, it was quite of a rush after Hex, wasn't it? It wasn't that long. No, it wasn't long. Well, I mean, we always had songs, didn't we? Yeah. But, I mean, I think we already were playing some of the stuff that eventually came out on Perverted by Language as well, I think. Was Tempo House one of them? And maybe that was slightly later. And um, Feel Voxish, I'm sure we were doing that with Mark. Yeah, we were. Yeah? Right. yeah. So, no, so... We weren't surprised because it wasn't ever going to be a single, were we? I think the idea was to go in and do a looser album to to Hex, wasn't it? Perhaps not quite that loose. Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> it succeeded in a lot of ways. Uh, right. Okay. This one's from Ant Volley. Not Ant as in Anti Volley. It's A N T. Um, right. Anodyne question, but any studio sessions. Uh, Peely, LP, EP, or single, whatever, stand out in your memory as being particularly enjoyable slash special. I think the, what the slates was really good. I think that was that was the first that was we were in London. It was the first decent studio. Yeah. No, I mean, I know Cargo was pretty good, but Slate seemed like a step up. Yeah, it was a step up, yeah. But I mean, apart from the obvious, which has been discussed, what's that? Well, the obvious problems in the studio. <laughs> Which was, what problems in? I don't remember any problems in. Oh, you mean um, you mean uh, middle mass? Yes. Ah, right. Okay. Well, I think that passed me by at the time, so I was in blissful ignorance of it. I didn't know any of that went on. I don't think. I only found out about that later. Right. I, I loved it in there. I thought it was, I thought that was a great it was session. A great studio, and it was a, mostly a great atmosphere and a, and really sort of good working atmosphere. Yeah, yeah it comes but, across as well, doesn't it? I think. Uh, yeah, it does come across. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the other, I've said it. Before, the other one I really enjoyed was when we did um, "Living Too Late" and not after Shave Bot. But I think the reason I would that because I was just guesting really, and I wasn't on the payroll, so it was, it was dead enjoyable. Like, it was dead no mm. pressure at all. Oh, yeah. You, which and later on, which ones were? There is certain albums I really enjoyed making more than others. Yeah, I seem to remember. Uh, extra cake being good and and a lot of the beggars ones as well yeah uh infotainment scam was a really good time i think it does i do think it comes across in the album yeah when you listen to it that the sort of band were all working in the same direction yeah well i mean i think i just that's a bit of a contrast thing yeah. because the, i i never the, the only one where they weren't for me was um at the aforementioned uh, room to live, that was. I mean, we were always working in the same direction up till then, weren't we? I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got really good, really good memories of that first peel session. Oh, a peel session! Yeah, definitely. That was that was that was I mean, most amazing. Them were great, to be fair, yeah. but uh, that first one stands out. Yeah, definitely for me that because that was like when that was your first, the same one, wasn't it? Weirdly, same one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I, I, that was just brilliant, wasn't it, going in the BBC? Yeah. That. Made of Hell was a great place to go, I think. It was. And it was perfect for the fall, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, subsidised canteen, as I've mentioned before. So you get a, de- <laughs> get a decent meal for 50p. Yeah. <laughs> the song's down in a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. This one's uh, Matthew Connolly, friend of mine. He well, it was a friend of mine until he put this question in. <laughs> If it's not your granny on bongos, if it's not no. your granny, who is on bongos? Well, that's Steve Davis, isn't it? Not the snooker player. He would be the bongo player. He's the only bongo player I remember being involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, um, he played on that peel session that resulted in Eric not bothering, didn't he? Yeah. Played on Rebellious Jukebox. And then he came back, so he played a couple of gigs. We did the. He played when we did the Rainbow supporting the Cure. Yeah, he played, and that was because and we, he took over for did. me, didn't he? He did. We did a we did a fairly disastrous tour of uh, the Netherlands. Thank Christ! 
with him. <laughs> on, but not on the kit, though, not on just on the bongo. No, right, OK. Because that would have been a bit weird, wouldn't it? It'd be like bloody mm. Tyrannosaurus Shrek. Right? I seem to remember the kit being destroyed every night. Yes, it was my kit. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't great to begin with. <laughs> Didn't come back in such no, a great state. He matched sticks when it came back. <laughs> but yeah, he, was, he played, well, it was Congas, really, more properly, wasn't he? But that's the nearest yeah. fall I've got to a bongo player, I think. He was good, wasn't he? He was good, yeah. yeah. That pink yeah. version of Rebellious Shootbox with him on the Congas is really yeah, good. That's really good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> right, here we go. I've got, I've not that's, got enough of, that's enough of Steve. Oh, hello, Steve, yeah. if you're listening. Um, yeah. No, he, was in, they were in, he was in a band called Victor Drago, wasn't he? Who supported us a yeah. few times. Yeah. What was the name of the this guitarist? I think uh, he passed away now. I think God rest his soul. What was it? He was a, he was a great lad as well. But... They were all great lads, weren't they? They were all sort of eccentric in their own way. <laughs> you could say that. I remember when we when we played the Rainbow, he came with us, Waterfoot Dandy, and he painted a stripe on his uh, jacket. Uh, you know, like um, on the lapels, you know, like the prisoner. Yeah. Yeah. He has the white stripe now. Well, he painted a red, painted a red stripe. Red stripe round the collar of his jacket, I seem to recall. I don't know why that stuck in my memory. <laughs> and I remember he went up to Susie Sue. Yes. And said, I'm from the Rotten Rossendale Free Press. Have you got anything to say? <laughs> 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 right, next question. I've not got a name for this. It might be Darren. Um sorry if you if I seem a bit thick, Steve. Oh, that's not it. No, there's a question as well. Who, who, came, who came up with the Cruiser's Creek bass line? Well, well, it's a riff, well, isn't it? It's not, is it? You're all playing the same thing, aren't you? It's pretty much. The, uh, the, that riff is pretty much following the guitar, isn't yeah, it? I think so. But it was Simon who came up with it, Simon Rogers. Oh, right. <laughs> that was done in my sort of paternity leave. That was, was it? written and recorded. But well, you're on it, though, aren't you, Cruises Creek? I'm not on the single. You know, I thought you were. No. I thought it was Rolling Danny you weren't on. Well, that was the single, the B-side. Ah, got it. Right, that, OK. That was the B-side of Cruises Creek. Right. Oh, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> I think you're wrong. Yeah, you could, couldn't get ahead and Rolling Danny, isn't it? You tell me. You're the one not on it. Well, if we well, <laughs> look at them both not on it, I thought Cruiser's Creek was a single in its own right. I think they did that in that session. Oh, all right, okay. In that recording session, they they did so much in that three months. Yeah, when they were finally, yeah. when they finally, yeah, you know, they had a set a with, with a dart and got, you know, they were away, weren't they? When she were off, they, they did so much in that three or four months. That they did an American tour, British tour. Uh, no, they didn't. Those two, two singles then. Two singles. Singles, yeah. Yeah, hell, right. Well, I mean, I'm sure someone will put... Cruiser's Creek, Cruiser's Creek came out after I'd gone back. Yeah, because you're on that. Is it, what were you doing? Was it the, what was it called, the programme? You do it on, the, not the, the Roxy, was it? Did you do it on that? Or was it the Tube you did it on? I don't think we did Cruiser's Creek on the Tube. Well, there's some film of you doing it on TV. Right. Definitely is. I right. thought it was possibly the well, tube. Right. Well, Mark, well, here we go again with the memories. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not on the. Okay. I'm not on the recorded version <laughs> of that. We've, we've really cleared that up, then, haven't we? Thanks. It, yeah. it's, sorry if you are a bit thick. Yeah. <laughs> Even the bleeding band can't remember who's on it. <laughs> right. Okay. Next question: What were the sirens like? Any good? That's Darren Elgar. So the Sirens was the band you, Mark, and Craig were in before Mark joined the Fall. That's correct, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, we well, we only played one gig. So whether we're any good or not is probably pretty hard to tell. Pips was it? Pennell Street. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I think it had the potential. Yeah. Well, the singer is still. Seems to be going round with the fast cars, and the drummer was a, a, a student who was in Manchester called Paul Eastman, and so I think it had the potential, but it never, never obviously, never got realised because Steve. It's a shit. It's a shit business. The first gig, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Next question: Who are your favourite bass players? There's two questions here, and who did you learn from growing up? 
Right, well, learn from is obviously Mark Riley. Yeah. Because he was the first one to buy a guitar, the first one for, to talk about getting a band together. Uh, I originally was going to buy a drum kit. Thank <laughs> Christ you didn't. That's all I can <laughs> say. Save the world a lot, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but I ended up buying a bass and then we being at his house and my house and uh I've just checked a, a quote of mine. <laughs> the, 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 oh, yeah. the, the first song Mark taught me was Hey Joe by Yes. Yeah, I know that because I I've mentioned that when we did this thing for um the Giddy Carousel of Pop, and I remembered that that was the first song yeah, you ever learned on the bass. So, so Mark showed you that. Well, I mean, Mark well, showed did. you everything, really. <laughs> 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 if, it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him, mate, you'd still be pulling pipes <laughs> in the sale hotel. Well, I don't know about that, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shut down now. So. Uh, but yeah, so he was a year, I'd say, a year or so ahead of me at least. And then, yeah. then so I, I took it for, and then we'd work out Buzzcock songs, try and work out the baseline to boredom and stranglers, and just then just. So who were your favourite bass players then? Yeah, you know, there's a, a question, yeah. <laughs> That's a question you know before, it is a question, yeah, until you, you get asked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Old Watts. I'm going to say Bruce Foxton. Right. Guy out of madness. Oh, you love him, don't you? Can't even remember his pissing name, but you know. <laughs> Mark. Mark. Bedders, yeah. Bedders, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, they can't have been, so it must have been Old Ren Watts growing up. Yeah, I mean, I was never. <laughs> I don't remember remember going to see them, and yeah, Trevor Boulder, of course, but I don't remember going to see them and think, yeah. thinking that's what I want to do. No, you're not going to watch no. Bowie at bloody uh, in Boulder London and looking at Trevor Boulder. fucking Boulder. No, no. <laughs> 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 the best one in the world. <laughs> got to see Genesis. Well, was very good. <laughs> who, was the, who was the bass player in Genesis? Was it, was it, yeah. was it Mike Rutherford? Was he the bass player? He then? had a double, no. didn't he? What, what, like in my, I was Monty's double, that kind of what the bloke who looked just like him, double. a double neck. <laughs> I don't know how he made that work, work, but he <laughs> well, you see, this is oh, that's just like the spinal tap thing, isn't it? Right, double bass, <laughs> double neck bass. No, I think he, he had a guitar. All oh, right, because I, I, I was always thought that was great. That spinal tap, what's the bleeding difference? You've got two bases, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, well, I think that's the point, isn't it? But, uh, but. I think Mike Rutherford had the, a guitar and a bass. So I don't know what happened when he was yeah, playing yeah. guitar. The other, the other guitarist couldn't hack it. Hey. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> right, OK. Perhaps impossible to answer. No, probably not more impossible than the last question. But, uh, right. Uh, possi- perhaps impossible to answer. What do each of you consider was the ultimate fall lineup? Come on. <laughs> Easy that, go on. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Listen, you've got to, I think you've got to do it in one you were in and one you... How many, how many people am I, would I upset by answering Yeah, well, I that? think it, it, you could only do it one you weren't in and one you were in, possibly. But even then, yeah. it's, it's a bit... Well, the one you weren't in is easy enough, but um, the one you were in... The one that wasn't in was that it's line at the end. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, it was it's literally was the ultimate fall lineup, wasn't it? Well, but, yeah, but yeah. they were, they were great then. But um, so if if I, I mean, the great thing about the fall was the oh man, there was which is an, why I hate that Granny on Bongo <laughs> call because uh, there were so many great people involved was, in that band. Was. Because I'm uh, thinking about that personally, for me, it was the the Hex lineup was the one for me because it was you know yeah. it was I was the right age. I had me, me you know my mates and my brother and. Carl for entertainment, mm. and we were making great stuff. But, but then you know you could set that up. The, you know the other lineups. That doesn't mean the other lineups weren't really good as well. But and then that, that, yeah, it, was a, you know, the Brick and Marsha, Martin and Marsha. Dave Bush, Dave Bush is brilliant. Dave Bush, man, yeah, yeah. That's a really tricky question to answer. I mean, I've been casting my mind right now recently since that St Helen's Technical College album yeah. came out. 
that it would have been interesting to see where that yeah. could have gone. I mean, yeah, so so we had, I mean, there was the... Cause that's in a world of its own, yeah. that music. Comes so you mean without Carl coming back, just, just the five of us carrying on? Yeah. Yeah. Because it did take it in a completely different direction, Carl coming back, didn't it, I suppose? Hmm. Which I mean, I mean, whether it's better or worse, I don't know. But yeah, I know what you mean. It w- it would have been. I mean, I, I always think that about the first lineup. You know, the the witch trials. Where could that have gone as well? Yeah. Where could that have gone as well? Because yeah. if you think about that, that first album. I mean, there was only Martin really writing then. If if you you know if it uh, carried it carried on and Mark had started writing as well, Mark Riley. I mean, that that was you know, they had the potential there to be a really big band. I think they did. They did. They had yeah. everything. Yeah. Aye. I mean, he was a bit of a rock star, Martin, as well, as well. You know, to look at, wasn't he? You know what I mean? He, he was like, he was, he was quite cool yeah. in a yeah. in a way that me and thee never kept, quite managed. You know, he was quite cool, Martin, wasn't he? He was. He was. He definitely yeah. had the look and the, and the attitude, and, and so did Carl. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, he was, uh, Carl was a rock star going to the shops to buy a paper, wasn't he? Let's face it. He was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not that. Yeah. Not that he read very much. <laughs> <laughs> to buy a, to buy yeah, a gun yeah, magazine. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Do you think the always different, always... There's another call I can't start. Do you think the always no. different, always the same stems from changing musicians and the one constant, Mark E. Smith? I'm not so sure that's what he meant by that, Peel. I think he was talking about the sound, really, where... You... I think so. I think he... It kind of meant whatever they do. Yeah. It's kind of true, isn't it? If we tried to put our hand at reggae or yeah. whatever, or dance music yeah. later on, it still sounded like yeah. a fall. Yeah, that's, that, that's it, I think. I think the, the, you could. it's quite unusual in the band. I mean, certain bands can do it, but you, where you can play different sort of styles but still sound like the fall. It's, I, um, it's quite unusual, that, because I think part of that is that nobody had... had Nobody was a massively brilliant, you know, set like session musician. Because where you know where you you can say right, we're going to do a reggae song and you play it like proper reggae, or you're going to do, you know what I mean? It, you, yeah, we we could only play yeah, how we yeah, play. That's right. <laughs> Which you know, at the end of the day, well, that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. enough, I think. Yeah. Right. Next question. For years, the transcripts, I presume the lyrics, right, had the cafe. Iol, I-O-L, in Iceland. That's Iceland, the song. So Marx is in the Café Iol. So uh, is it Café Iol or was it Café Iol? Come we're getting into... <laughs> so that's Iol as in I- A-I-S-L-E, Iol, like, you know. So, yeah. Yes, I know, yeah. So I don't remember there being a Café Iol, do you? I seem to remember there being a Café Iol, yeah. Café I-O-L in the hotel in Reykjavik. So Hotel Borg? Or was that, was that yeah. where we stayed in Hotel Borg? Was that where we played? Or was that both? Did we play in the hotel? I don't think we played in the hotel we right. stayed at. You, oh. well, well, no, why but... the bleeding hell not? We were playing in a hotel and staying in a different hotel. Who, who thought of that? Yeah, but it, it had a venue yeah, in it, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> yes, I well, it did have a venue well, in it, because it had a venue like... in it with no it stage, was... if you recall. <laughs> yeah. We did. Well, that was just like a big modern hotel, wasn't it? Where yes, we stayed. it was. Well, I seem to remember it out of Cafe IOL. Right, okay. But you never know with these things. You might, it, you might, it might be that you've read it and then it certainly gets put in your head, doesn't it? I mm. see. I, well, I was convinced that it was. Well, I'm not convinced, but I didn't think it was. But then again, I, I don't know. Who knows? You need someone to go out there and find out. But I think people have tried. I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure um, Stuart Lee said he went looking for it and it's, you know, nobody had ever heard of it. Or, Plus, if, if right. it could have been the name of the cafe in the hotel, then there wouldn't have been a sign or anything, would there? So, right, anyway, moving on. We're never going to get to the bottom of that one. Right. I think that, you know, there was a cafe that you didn't have to be staying at the hotel to go in. Ah, right, okay. But, I mean, like I say, it's for you. <laughs> I remember we had vouchers for the cafe. I remember that. We did. So is this this cafe, is it in the hotel we're staying at or, the, or in the hotel? Yeah, the hotel right, okay. staying at, yeah. Okay. Grant might know. Grant might well know, yeah. I'll ask him. Uh, okay, right. Was there ever... Next question. This is uh, somebody... Well, that's a confusing. Cruiser's Creek is the name of the person who asked the question. I'm sure that's not his real name, but um, was there any, ever any discussion of the fall releasing records on Factory? I think it was 
uh, uh, probably that discussion would have been made between Mark and Kay and would never have got to us until it was decided. Yeah, that's probably true. But, but yeah. I do seem to think it was it, it had was meant it did crop up from time to time when we were trying to rough trade and. Yeah. But and I think if you look at Factory's sort of roster, the the stuff they released was just people they were mostly people they were involved with and friends and friends of friends. Yeah, of course, yeah. I don't I mean from what I, what, what I can gather, I don't think they were trawling through demo tapes, were they? I wouldn't have thought Tony Wilson was spending his evenings going through cassettes. Yeah, no, no. So I mean, I, I'll, yeah, but was so. Possibly they would have had the fall, but Mark didn't. Mark and Kay didn't want to do it. You think it'd be that way around? Possibly. Possibly, yeah, yeah. I think that would have would have been the case. Yeah. I mean, it might have been a massive deal, or it might have just been a single. Yeah. But there was I mean, definitely talk about us doing something with Actra. I mean, they're, 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 I mean, you get the, for what Mark said in interviews. Well, it's got on like Rob Gretton was always friendly. Great. Oh, good, wasn't yeah. he? Um, they always got on well with Tony Wilson, didn't they, Mark? Yeah. And Tony? yeah. Apart from when she was on the phone with him in that video. <laughs> 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 that was a bad date, right? Okay. So, you, that's Kay getting on great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were seeing her when she was annoyed. <laughs> well, you did. <laughs> I did, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> right, moving on. What What is your favourite post Hanley Fall song? That's from Itchy Barry. Right. Well, uh, it did take me a few years. I didn't listen to them. I must yeah. admit, I didn't listen to them for for quite a few years after I left. Obviously, they crop up after every now and again, and yeah, especially when you know when the car advert come on the team. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find the remote. <laughs> uh, but the, yeah, a few of like show, uh, prop, cropped up over. I really like that Venice with the girls. Do you know oh, that? Yeah, such I do. a great riff, and I think they would do. They were masters of a great riff, weren't they? they were, yeah, I tell you what, if that like that Wolf Kid Up Man, I don't know if you've heard that. That see is the riff that is. That is just and it's really well produced. Well, there's two versions. As I think one's Grant's version. I think he was talking about it, wasn't it, the other week? Mm. It's like the old roll version, and that the both of them just really. You know, like when you know you would get hold of a riff and ring the living fucking yeah. daylights out of it. You know, yeah. really good. And what's it as well? I, I, I thought about yeah, uh, um, moments, isn't it? Yeah, right definitely. What about us? That's Steve Trafford's lineup, isn't it? That's really good as well. That's a good and song. Of course, blindness. Blindness, yeah. Aye, yeah. that's Steve, isn't it? Yeah. Doctor Book's letter. That was a bit of a cracker. We, I don't, I'm not sure who was on that. I'll I get told. We'll get told. Pretty good, isn't it? Well, well, it, very good. It's the theme from Sparta FC. Yeah, that's great. That's really good. Yeah, that's really good. Cracker. Well, there you go. So that's the answer to that. We've got a few itchy belly. Put some cre- put some cream on it. Uh, right, here's a good one for you, Steve. I'm not sure I can answer this. Did stardom go to the band's heads? I think I'd say no. I don't. I don't well, think. Let's, let's let's break it. Was there any? Was there was anything there any... with stardom? Stardom. I no. don't. I think my memories of that are. Just being treated slightly better. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think you could call it stardom, but I think just being just internally is you go. You know, from a tran from a minibus to a coach with beds. Yeah. Decent hotels. Yeah, but I mean, if you're talking in terms of stardom, if you and Craig had, you know. Just been well, in the pub next to the biggest—I don't know where the biggest place well, you played. I, I, How many th- people in there would know who you were? I don't think there's many. I don't think it was. Well, I, I think when I at, where I lived at the time, and when I went to work at that school, yeah, I used to get recognised a lot more for working at the school than I ever did for being in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Oh, Mr. Hanley, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think the fall are more. Streets, yeah, yeah. I think more people that know who the fall are now than. Uh, yeah, possibly. Even when they were at the biggest, possibly. Yeah. Mm. I did get mistaken for you the other day. Who by? There's lads outside this bar shouting, Paul, 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 Paul. 
No, I what bar was it? It was the drawing room. <laughs> Where the hell's the drawing room? It's on Burton Road. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> Well, you know what? I didn't own money, did I? I'm looking over, but I, I, I had a mask. <laughs> <laughs> when I took that off, he started shouting Paul at me. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I own money, I don't know. <laughs> right, okay. Here we go. Another Danny No here. Right. Mark E. Smith said he didn't like slash understand musicians. Obviously, this is at least partly myth-making, and he needed musicians anyway, but I'm in... God, this is a bloody war and peace, this. But I'm interested if and how tension in approaches might come through on record. That's the first thing. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I think it is a bit of myth-making him saying he didn't like musicians. He spent plenty of bloody time with them, didn't he? Well, pretty much all his life, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know how you can generalise and call somebody a musician. Is are you going to lump me in with Mar- with Marsha or yeah. Bricks or would just like totally yeah. different people? Yeah, I mean, you know, Carl. You wouldn't say Carl and Marsha were exactly the same person, would you? Or <laughs> or any of them really? I mean, I mean, I mean, even Mark and Craig weren't exactly you know alike in that respect, you know, were they? You could, no. you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a very good point. I think that. you can say just because someone's a musician they, that they've got some kind of trait about them that that makes yeah. them all the same. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, uh, again, I mean, there are certain musicians who seem to disappear, you know, up their own ass talking about guitars all the time and um, pedals and, you know, but whoever that was, it certainly wasn't that anybody was, who was in the yeah, pub. It was. <laughs> must be joking. So I mean, but I mean, he, I mean, I'm not 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 just us either. I don't, but there was never a lineup of the fall where they were that kind of typical. All they ever talked about was oh, music. No, they? no, and I mean, and it it, the, it wasn't. And we have been in bands since me and you, and yeah. uh, that that has stood out. That when we were in the fall, we rarely talked about the music, if at all. Yeah, if at all. I mean, rarely talked about equipment or what we were. But, You'd only have to look at our equipment to see that we didn't spend much time talking about equipment. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I think it is a bit of myth making that, isn't it? Mm. I think. Yeah. Again, there's this thing we've discussed this before that the Marky Smith who does an interview isn't necessarily, you know, I mean, it's him, it's an aspect of him, but he says stuff in interviews to make an interesting interview, doesn't he? I think he does, and obviously, Which is fair enough. Yeah, and obviously, he was the fall, and the fall was him. And, uh, yeah, but, but there, it, there's a kind of thing of him separating himself from yeah any musician who may come on, come and go. Yeah, but, but again, which is fair enough, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, I mean. It, uh, <laughs> uh, he has seen. I've seen interviews with him where he said the drummer does, did this, and do, well, do you not know his name? <laughs> <laughs> no, a bit like that, isn't he? He says that. Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that with Noel Gallagher. It's, it's the guy who played on there. He was in about bleeding fifteen years. <laughs> it's, uh, is it Steve White? Is it? Is that his mm-hmm. name? Or, or is it no Alan White? His yeah. brother, isn't it? <laughs> Because the drummer didn't even know the songs. I mean, hang on. He doesn't even know his name. <laughs> <laughs> right, and then the second part of this question is, um, what would you point at and say, I wouldn't have done that with, with things ma- music, with things Mark did about music? I mean, I've mentioned before the thing on Winter where he wiped the bass mm. and drums. I mean, in a million years, you would be hard-pressed to find anybody else who thought that was a good idea, I think, at the yeah. time. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot, I think. There's, there's, there's a, it's a good thing and a bad thing with that. Yeah. If you came up with an idea or a song, generally it would turn out nothing like it yeah. was going on, what was going on for you. Yeah, definitely, yeah. There is that one I've said about Look Nowhere, I thought it was going to sound like Dex's Midnight Runners. And, and... <laughs> it did sound like Dex's Midnight no. Runners, didn't it? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's a great thing about a band, though. Definitely. I mean, that's why it's a band, isn't it? You wouldn't yeah. if, if it was just you coming in and saying, I want this to sound exactly... Which, which to be fair, Mark didn't do either, really, did he, most well, of the time, no. I don't think. No. No, he was quite happy for people to let him, uh, for people to put their part on it. Yeah. 
Because I mean, um, even you know, even stuff he he wrote music, the music for it wasn't it wasn't by the time it had been through the mill of the fall, it didn't sound like what was going on in his head, did it? Mo? No, and you rarely got told not to play that, and yeah. unless it was a drum roll. I <laughs> <laughs> can't say that either because he only got another drummer in. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I, I, I can't remember where I've said that. I think it sometimes he would say stuff, but he would quite, you know, be glad of the pushback. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. If he'd say just play one note and you didn't just play one note, then I think then. Whatever that, whatever X you were playing, it really was, had to be really important. You weren't pissing about. If you were going to put say, right, I'm not doing what you said, I'm going to do something else, then you'd have yeah. to be pretty sure that it was going to be good, I think. Mm. Which is a great thing, isn't it? It's, I mean, it's uh, one of those things about the fall, isn't it, I suppose? Well, he did seem to keep that up all the way through, yeah. yeah definitely. I mean, I, I, you know, that, I was saying about that wolf kiddled man and stuff like that. That's the fall. That's you could. That's that riff, and that's you know, you could you could get a song like that in nineteen eighty one. You could get a song like that in twenty fourteen. Yeah. It's quite incredible. And the, but they're not the same. The st- you know, it's not. It's not. Doesn't they not sound like they're trying to play like Mark Riley or it's, it's them? But it's still the fall, which is you know. Yeah. If only there was a go to quote for that kind of thing. But never mind. <laughs> Last question. Last right. question. Uh, what were your favourite fall tracks to be involved in the writing and recording of? Ooh. Steve Walsh, that is. Well, that changes all the time, doesn't it? I suppose so. Yeah. I mean, the, the one I always say is New Puritan, cause it was yeah. the, because that kind of got me the gig, really. When he mm. sort of said, we want the drums to start it, and you can, you know, because obviously it had been recorded without any drums at all. I say recorded. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, there, there's, lo- there's lo fi. Yeah, that and came, then there's that came new up on, on my, something the other day. God, it's. Oh, so, that, that made me laugh because obviously. Um, we were getting to grips with the technology of this podcast and a couple of people saying about uh, the sound's not very good. I thought, bloody hell, <laughs> you're the fan of the wrong band, if the sound. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of one that I could... Favourite song in the writing and recording? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, would it be because of the situation? It wouldn't be because of the... Um, you've got. Is it because of the actual song? Or is it just because of the where you were? I mean, that's the thing with New Pure. And I was new in the band, and yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily the song, which is great. The song, don't get me wrong, but it was it was more the situation that I was sort of where I wanted to be, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but just I don't, I don't know why I'm thinking of a couple off Extra K, which is Chicago now, which I think is really good. Right. Uh, Rose, I don't know that. So were you did you involved when you, you were you wrote them or were you was it your original idea or was it something? Uh, uh, Rose was one of those ones where you somebody plays something at a sound check and then somebody plays something else and they work on it and then come back to it. Right. Was that other one as well, which is uh, kind of around that time? Is that Zagreb? Oh yeah, that was another one of that like that. Right, so it wasn't, and you couldn't really say who wrote it. That's yeah. one of them. But... I say I didn't get a credit. <laughs> okay, I didn't get a credit when I should have. But uh, yeah. there you go. And Chicago now was right. I seem to remember me and Simon spending hours and hours in just in this old warehouse in Ancoats, going through that over and over again. Right. That's very satisfying, isn't it, when you do that? I mean, that, that's yeah. the hit priest I always think was that, you know, whether you couldn't say, nobody could say, I wrote that, really, could mm. they? No. And that's very satisfying. It's very, it's, I think it's quite difficult to do when that was nobody's original well, it's, line. Yeah, it's difficult to get right. Yeah, yeah. It's dead easy to get wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, oh, so, good. all right, mate? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All Thanks right. a lot. Cheers. See you later, mate. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us this week on Old Brother. We're off on our holidays for a bit, but we've got some great guests lined up for Series 2, which will hopefully be with you later in the year. 
In the meantime, please follow us on Twitter at Old Brother Show, you can, where you can find a link to Spotify and subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or RSS so you'll never miss an episode. While you're at it, give us a rating on iTunes or tell your friends about us. For further reading, you can check out our books about the fall, the big big week, and have a bleeding guess, both available from Root Publishers and all good bookstores. Hope to speak to you all again soon, and remember, if you're driving, take your car. Ta-da!